Welcome to my training Zoom room. My name is Pandora and I want to tell you a little bit about pivot tables. Pivot tables I found to be life-changing and I know that sounds really dramatic, but, but they are. It's just an amazing thing. Once upon a time, if I had a data set like I have here in my sales file, I would have hated it. My first instinct would be to go through and rearrange it so that it was a little bit better summarized, right? I would want to set this up instead of having all of this boring repetition, I'd probably have set it up more like I have here in PowerPoint, where I have my pants, my blouses, and my socks for each of my items, my red, white, and blue for each of my colors, and then summed up the number sold. And then I probably, because there's so much information, would have split it out even more to have it by size, all of the large pants, all of the medium pants, all of the small pants. And then maybe even set up a separate worksheet for every single quarter. So all the first quarter stuff, all the second quarter stuff. And then I could have made it all orange and blue and gatorific, and it would have looked awesome. And as I gathered my new data sets, I would just come in and fill it all in and it would look awesome. And the problem is that it would look awesome. I can't really do anything with it outside of look at it and put my numbers in. If I needed to go through and try to analyze this data, Oh, it's difficult to do when it's in the structure. If I need all the small items across the whole year, and I got a whole bunch of copy and paste, copy and paste, I'm constantly pulling in my data from all of these different worksheets that I've. So one of the lessons that just changed the way that I looked at everything is the more boring your data, the more you can do with it. If we go back and we think about the simplicity of a filter, if I was trying to filter this data, all of this first quarter has to be here, first quarter, first quarter, first quarter, or else it's not going to work the way I need it to. So the same thing's happening here with my pivot table. I can going to show you how to take all of this data and very, very quickly turn it into this without having to cut and paste and re-add things together. Ready? All right, let's come all the way back up here. So I'm at the top of the PowerPoint presentation so I can see my initial plan. And here inside the data set, I'm in the data itself. Now I'm on cell A12. I'm going to come up to A1. It doesn't really matter as long as you're on a single cell in your data set. Title for every column, title for every row, brings it all together for me. I'm not going to select it all. I'm just going to stay here on the very first cell. I'm going to go to the insert tab. And the very first button on your insert tab should be your pivot table. Now, if your screen is squished like mine is, it might be under the tables menu, but should be the very first button in the ribbon. When I choose pivot table, it's going to come up and say we've selected this data, which is perfect. It's going to put it on a new worksheet for me, which is also great. Okay, this is going to make a brand new worksheet for me. And it's going to put an empty structure of a pivot table here. And my titles, my quarter item size, color, number sold are showed up here because your columns are your fields of data. This is my pivot table field. And a pivot table has four sections. It's got a filter, right, where we limit our data. We have the titles of where our columns are gonna go. We have our titles where our rows are gonna go. And we have our sum values in the middle. So let's see, I wanted, the hardest thing is planning it out, right? Think about what it is you want before you come in. I want my pants, blouses, socks along the side. So they are gonna be row titles. So I'm taking my item and dragging it down to the rows. Then I wanted my color red, white, and blue at the top. So those are my column headings. So my color is gonna go into my columns. Then I wanted to sum the number sold, recognize that sigma as our auto sum. I see it here with my values as well, taking the number sold and I'm just dragging it down to values. As I add these, I see it automatically building this for me. And so now I see my blouses, pants, socks. How come it's not pants, blouses, socks, and red, white, and blue? Well, A, B, C, D. What Microsoft Excel is doing is it's taking a, the unique values, putting them in alphabetical order, and setting them in the table for me. It's changeable, but I'm okay with this for right now. Let's go a little deeper. I've got this small subset. I now want to break it out by size, right? Now, again, think about this as large, medium, small, they're at the beginning of the rows. So I'm gonna take size and bring it down to the rows. Now I put it underneath items. So I ended up with blouses, large, medium, small, pants, large, medium, small. 
I got that backwards, right? I wanted all my sizes first. And the beautiful thing here is this is all soft clay. Just pick it up and move it around. So I'm gonna take item and drag it under size. And just like that, it fixes it for me. So now I have my large blasted pant socks, medium blasted pant socks. Awesome. Then I said I might wanna make it so it's only one quarter at a time. We talk about it in the other sessions, but the idea of a filter is getting only what we want, right? So a coffee filter, we remove the grounds and we see just what we want. So I wanna filter this to only look at one quarter at a time. And down the bottom half, I have a filter group. So I'm gonna drag that word quarter down into the filter. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna show up at the top of my table here. And of course I am looking at all of them. And I'm gonna change this to be just first quarter and okay. And there it is, just my first quarter data. Then I can come into my second quarter and my third quarter and bring it back to all to get the whole year if I wanted to. And then if I wanted to make it all pretty, well, that's going to do your design. So up here in the pivot table toolbar, I have a design tab. All right, so I'm analyze and design. And on the design, here are my beautiful colors. Now I can go to the home tab and be able to change these to be different colors if I wanted to. But sometimes we have to refresh the data in the pivot table. And when we do that, we often lose the color coding, not always, but sometimes. So something to be aware of that if you change the colors yourself, you might lose them. But this one's behaving today and it came out beautiful for me. So I've got all of this data here in worksheet one, all of this data, whew, just like that, wrapped up into here. And it took a few minutes, but I talked through the whole thing, right? So the big things here are have that repetition, have that boringness going on and on and on and on over and over and over. It doesn't matter what order it's sorted in, right? It's forgiving that way, but it does matter that it has that repetition. And then we pull it into this table, right? And it's a good idea to have a plan, right? Otherwise you're in here just kind of throwing things into a bowl and trying to see what you can bake. We want to actually think about, are we making a cake? Are we making bread? Are we making what? So we figure out what it is we want to make. We have all that repetition. We say insert pivot table. Okay. And then we just put things in their proper order. Row titles, column titles, filters, right? and summing up our data. And that's it. That's the basis of a pivot table. And they're amazing.